What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. Today we are taping in the Lincoln Building, historic Lincoln Building, I should say, rather, right here in the 18th and Vine District. My special guest today is running unopposed in sub-district number two, Kansas City School Board, for the school board candidacy. The election will be held on April 2014, and if you're elected, you will serve a three-year term? Five-year term. Five-year term, rather. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Kansas City, Missouri School Board candidate, Mr. Gunnar Hand. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you for having me. Well, Mr. Hand, we really want to get into the meat of the sandwich here. Can you tell us why you decided to seek re-election to the Kansas City School District School Board, sub-district number two? Absolutely. I think, uh, I hope most candidates have the same answer, and that's, we, we do it for the kids. Uh, it's really important. Uh, we value public education, uh, and it's important that that is a vital uh, option in uh, Kansas City metropolitan region. Uh, for me personally, uh, I have two daughters. Uh, one is two years old, the other one's five weeks old. And my wife and I are fully intended on sending them to Kansas City Public School District. So, Wow, that's uh, a commitment for you guys. Yes, and so we, uh, you know, I was actually raised uh, in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, live in the same neighborhood I grew up in. And my parents sent me to um, all private and parochial schools all throughout high school. Which ones? Uh, I went to Sion, St. Paul's, then Rockhurst. Rockhurst, good old... Uh what, what one is your mascot there before it's I put the, my hand up? It's the Hawklets. The Hawklets, okay. Because Rockhurst University is the Hawks. The Hawks and the Hawklets. And what year did you come out of Rockhurst? Uh, I graduated from Rockhurst in 2000, no, excuse me, 1999. 1999, that's a pretty good uh, time period. Do you know Brandon Shelby? I do know Brandon Shelby. Brandon Shelby, okay. Well, I'm not going to play favorites here, but Rockhurst is kind of hard to not uh, at least show some type of admiration for uh your commitment to want to continue in the Kansas City School District, Mr. Han. Uh, what do you do professionally now? Did you go to Rockhurst University? No, I actually went out of state uh, for college and grad school um, and moved back to Kansas City after about 12 years on the road, uh, trying to find my wife and myself, I guess. Um, but I am a city planner by profession. Work for a company called BNIM here locally, um, doing uh, community consensus building and long range planning. And you have your Bachelor's of Environment and Design, I'm reading here from the University of Colorado, mm -hmm. and a Master's of Science at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. Why come back? Is there a special civic connection to Kansas City that drew you back? I mean, you're in Brooklyn, right. and you come back to Kansas City. Well, I think that, uh, you know, when I left when I was 18, I always knew that I wanted to move back to Kansas City. Um, I do have a strong connection to this place. Uh, I do believe it is one of the best cities in the world. Uh, Brooklyn is a very close second in my mind. I did study abroad in Copenhagen, Denmark, and, and that would be my, my close third. But uh, it's a very livable city. It's a great place to raise children. And again, my wife and I are, are doing everything we can to make uh, Kansas City Public School District good for not just our children, but a whole generation of children. And you did answer the questions about civic activities and community programs? Um, I'm, I'm engaged in, in, in a lot of different capacities in Kansas City. I am, uh, I'm on the board of my homeowners association. Uh, I'm a board member of the Kansas City Regional Trans Alliance. Uh, I started a collaboration between KCRTA, the Trans Alliance, and the American Institute of Architects. It's called Transform KC. Mm -hmm. uh, we put together an exhibition that was in Union Station last November, and it is now currently in uh, Jackson County Courthouse. It's about the transformative power of rail-based transit, everything that's going on with streetcar in the city and commuter rail in Jackson County. So uh, I, I touch a lot of different areas, um, but I think um, my wife, in particular, is the chair of Friends of Hale Cook, trying to bring back Hale Cook Elementary, which was a mothball school in Waldo in my district. Um, and that was really my entree into um, public education. Uh, seat went up uh, vacant um, in 2012, and uh, I ran for it. Sounds very interesting. Mr. Han, if you don't mind, for the next five minutes, Let's focus in on your vision for the Kansas City, sure. Missouri Public School District. Every time I say Missouri, got to remember to say public school. State officials have withheld provisional accreditation from Kansas City School District in spite of improved academic performances. Mr. Han, what will the school board do to help the school district regain its accreditation? Well, I think that what we do predominantly is uh, what our goal is, is obviously full accreditation. Um, I believe that we've earned um, provisional accreditation. It's just not been recognized. In fact, we were at a school board meeting last night uh, talking about this very issue. We're the only district in the state that has earned a certain level and does not have that level. So uh, I think that there is a lot of um, 
political pressure um, against the Kansas City Public School District. Uh, we live in a uh, legislature in, Kansas, in Missouri that is heavily dominated by rural politics. And uh, for, for more than not things, uh, you know, that, that, that is a burden on urban, uh, on urban politics. And we have a very urban school district. So St. Louis and, and Kansas City uh, usually get the rough of it for, for many different ways. I think that as a school board, uh, what we have specifically been doing is, is focusing in on, we hired the right guy with Steve Green. Um, he's committed to this community. Um, he's been here for three years and created a certain level of stability. Um, from an operations standpoint that has obviously produced um, results and I think the best thing a school board can do is, is not meddle with, with what he does but make sure that we keep him accountable uh, to our, which represents the community's vision. You said an uh, interesting there, thing there, Mr. Han. You talked about produced results. How about producing solutions? There have been several possible rescue our district solutions presented to the public. Which solution do you gel with as feasible in moving forward? I think that, um, well, you're talking about um, well, uh, the, uh, the Kansas City, Missouri Public School District has been unaccredited since yeah. January 2012. Flipping through what's online, you have the CEE you're Trust Plan, yeah, right. Superintendent Plan, Kansas City Public School Plan, Charter School Plan. Is what's best for our children getting lost in all the, the plans that are being? If you, uh, that's an excellent question, actually, the way you posed that last one. You know, if you read through um, the C-Trust stuff, it's not about Kansas City Public Schools. It's about reforming what public education is and using, using Kansas City Public School District as a test subject for that. What they have proposed has not been done anywhere in the country. With the Marvin Collins method working that, well, opening up our homes to the... I think that some of the principles within Coleman it, foundation type of principles, right? I think some of the the principles that they profess are things that we are already doing. They talk about um, local control of schools, and the superintendent has a um, process where he calls earned autonomy. And if you are doing the right thing and scoring the right numbers and making progress with your students, you get more and more autonomy as a as a principal. Mm -hmm. um, so we we are we are implementing that. Um, but again, we are a district that supports our local schools. Mm -hmm. So where those schools, for we have uh, a couple six schools, where those schools are not performing where they should, the district comes in and, and provides additional support. Otherwise, we just manage, um, you know, the logistics of running a large school district, which is very complicated. Um, you know, they talk about early childhood education right, is, right. A, is a big part of that. And um, we've been working with um, civic leaders uh, to develop an early childhood plan. How that gets funded is, is sort of the next step in, in what that committee is working on right now. Um, but again, we're working on that exactly. They talk about um, being accountable. And I apologize for, for sounding blunt here, but I believe that is what DESE's job is, is to keep school districts accountable. So to say that they're going to create a plan that makes us more accountable, um, I think gives up some of their um, interest in the fight there. I think that they're saying. You show a definite, you talk about it, it's complicated, but you show a definite understanding for the uh, school board procedures. Um, I've heard, and I'm trying to make sure uh, I, I say, I might not say all the questions exactly the same, but the question should be asked. Uh, I, I, I heard that we're gonna focus in on our scholars coming up. Is what's not being reported are we losing what's best for our kids in the controversy and the turmoil that we read? I think that um, I think that all of these outside pressures um, distract us from doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, they make us turn and pivot and look outward when we should be focusing inward on our students. Um, so yes, it does draw resources away when Desi says uh, we're going to put together a plan. C Trust is going to be that plan, and then three weeks what before. Is Desi? Uh, sorry, that's the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. That's the Missouri State Department Academy. of Education. Yeah, Department. sorry. So, um, you know, Desi hired C Trust to do a plan, um, for, uh, supposedly for KCPS. And then five weeks out of announcing uh, what that plan is, they say, we're going to open it up to all plans. Well, no one told us from the very beginning last spring that we were supposed to be producing our own plan. So that's why you saw this rush of four or five plans kind of being cobbled together and, and sort of dumped into the mix and saying, we're looking at all plans now. Mm -hmm. So they, they pivoted, right? And they pivoted and that caused us to change what we were doing, which was focusing on education to, well, if we're gonna open up a plan, then we gotta throw our, our plan into a mix because we do have a plan for um, a turnaround. It's been an implementation since, the turnaround plan's been on even since Covington. Dr. Green inherited the turnaround plan. So 
uh, you know, he's tweaked it obviously and, and adjusted it to what he thinks is best. And, and I think, again, the stability in the district based on the board essentially staying out of the superintendent's way of doing day-to-day -day operation stuff, and the fact that we've had a superintendent for three years, which doesn't sound like a long time, but for the history of Kansas City Public Schools, is, you know, we're on record here. So we're, the stability alone has, has corrected the shift to a degree. Um, it's put us on the right track, and I think that we, I believe that we are headed in the right direction. And what we need is continued stability. There is lots of stuff across the country where you hear about these great jumps and gains in academic achievement. And they end up being things like Atlanta, where it wasn't actually real. Real progress happens slow I and steady. That. Yeah, they, they cheated on their tests um, mm -hmm. in Atlanta, and so mm -hmm. there's this big fiasco. And so uh, real progress is seen in slow and steady paces. And the sad truth of that is, as you are slow and steady, some people you know, aren't caught up with that. So let's say slow and steady progress, those people who are uh, that cohort of students that are moving out of a school district won't necessarily um, benefit like other ones before them. So it's, it's um, well, let's catch up here. Does that state transfer um, that we read about, uh, does that have anything to do with, uh, let's see here, the state takeover? Do you think, how does that factor in with people saying that there might be a state takeover? We don't want um, our children going to unaccredited schools. Again, we, we were backed into a corner um, last November when the transfer law, when the state Supreme Court um, ruled that the transfer law was um, constitutional. And what we had to do then is take the drastic measure of suing the state to say that we deserve provisional accreditation. If we are designated by the State Board of Education provisionally accredited, um, then there is no, the transfer law doesn't apply to us. Oh, it doesn't. Um, but because they did not give us what we earned, it will apply to us. Now, when the when DESE chooses to implement that, it's kind of folded into the de the C trust plan, kind of folded into politics. But what 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 um, Dr. Castro, who heads DESE, um, has said uh, publicly is if we do show progress in this next this year, um, the the uh, students will take the MAP test, the state standardized test, um, in April. If we do show progress, the results come out usually in June or something like that. There's Scantron tests, so I don't know exactly how that takes long to do that, but um, it is a complicated system of, of points and, and ratios and stuff like that. So uh, when we do get the results back, if we do show progress, sustained growth, um, she said that she would recommend provisional accreditation. We're projected right now, we're projecting as a district to be um, reach uh, a level that would make us fully accredited. And if we get anything less than fully accredited, then we believe that we've been, again, um, not getting what we deserve. In any case, would a school takeover be ideal in this situation? No, a school takeover obviously is just, is. I think even the news coverage talking about a school takeover causes um, disruption. It causes distractions. It causes instability. And that is the greatest, um, in my opinion, that is the greatest um, liability um, that we have currently. You know, this, the, for decades, my entire life, um, this this district has been um, has been uh, subject to instability, whether it's from the school board or the revolving door of the superintendents or any other any other political federal funding. Everything it's just been one thing after another where we've had to restart and restart and restart, and we've never been able to you know dig our feet in the ground, get some traction, and actually work towards a goal for a sustained amount of time. We've shown that even in three years that that can make a big difference. And so I, I, I believe a, a, a takeover would be a, a huge mistake from the state. They've proven that they can't do it very well in St. Louis, so why would they think that they could do it well here? Um, I think that it's, uh, um, I think it would be a great fault. And again, the basis of why um, the school board um, decided to uh, take that action and sue the state was because, again, we believe that we earned provisional accreditation and we should have it. And if we have provisional accreditation, we wouldn't be subject to the transfer law, uh, nor would we be subject to um, some of the recommendations that have come out of the CEPA trust plan. Very analytical input. Mr. Han, can you tell us uh, how parents and community activists are talking back? Is it important for school board members to be able to talk with and work with members in the Kansas City community? You know, we, we updated our... Um, our vision for the district and our vision is supposed to be representative of the community's vision for their public education system. We are elected officials, we represent the community, that's what representative democracy is. 
um, in that uh, in that update of our vision of our policy document, um, which is how the go how the school board governs the the district. Um, it states it puts a high emphasis on collaboration. Now it's one thing to write that down and say it a bunch at school board uh, meetings and, and in public and in interviews. Um, but I think that it's another to create a culture of collaboration, a culture of community engagement. And that is something that um, uh, as a city planner personally I believe in. Uh, it's something that I've been uh, pushing since I've been elected. Uh, I think it is again imperative that the board um, demonstrate what that engagement means to the district and that we do it together. Um, we can and must do a better job engaging all stakeholders. There are people who don't like the district. There are people who are ambivalent about the district. And there are people who support the district, diehard families who support the district. We have to go back out to all of them mm -hmm. uh, and re-engage the public. The, the thing oh, I... Which family? Uh, every family. Mm -hmm. Uh, families in the school district are our number one ownership group. Um, teachers are an ownership group. Um, businesses are an ownership group. Neighborhood organizations are our ownership group. Uh, we need to go out to all of them uh, and get them re-engaged in the public school system. We will never succeed, have long-term real success, academic achievement, all of that, uh, unless the whole community is, is, um, has some buy-in uh, to make Kansas City Public Schools successful. Are you looking forward to working with certain, uh, whether they be new or old, school board candidate members uh, in the process procedure moving forward? You know, we're going to lose. Uh, we're definitely going to lose um, one school board member, Crispin Rea. Uh, he's not running again, and so I think that'll be a good, uh, great loss to the school board. He's been a um, uh, stable figure, um, uh, uh, a big supporter for the public school system. Um, in terms of all the other elections and all the other candidates, you know, I've sat on a couple of forums, um, even though I'm running unopposed, uh, uh, just to get the sort of my my message out there and my belief in, in how important community engagement is in this whole this whole equation here. Um, I think that they're all great candidates. Uh, you know, I think that people will choose which one they think is best, and that's what and you know honestly that's what being a board of nine really is. Um, you you have to figure out how to work together. And that's what um, that's what we did when I when I joined, and I was sort of the new person. Uh, we kind of got together and sort of hashed uh, hashed some stuff out and rethought about who we were and what we are. And and, and I think that we're making a the board uh, the part of the board that uh, will not uh, is not up for re-election is making a concerted effort that it's it's not new people coming into the existing board. It's a new board. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're trying to ceremoniously uh, make that distinction uh, after the elections and, and really sort of start fresh. It's the, I can't, I think I forgot what number it is. It's the whatever, 96 school board. It's not 96, it's some other number. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, long. It's, it's been a very long time. So it's, it's not that, uh, it is the, a new school board. It's not new people coming to the school board. And as a new school board, um, we have to come together and get, get on the same page and, and move forward because ultimately we all have the same goal. It's all about academic achievement and student achievement and for our children. Well, you could walk now because I failed to mention you're not actually running, jogging, we can say that. <laughs> uh, you are in the sub-district number two and you've served on the Kansas City, Missouri School Board mm -hmm. District since 2012. So we thank you for coming, sharing your knowledge and expertise. Hopefully some of the candidates, possibly winners, are looking at this. Um, and our voters so that they can vote responsibly. Uh, I have uh, one final question, sure. and then you can, uh, we'll open the floor, offer some final words to our viewers. Can you access your first tenor and tell us about some of your challenges and successes that you faced? Uh, so I was elected um, in a special election in, in 2012, so I've actually only been on the board for about a year, year and a half. Um, and in that time, uh, or even before that time in my campaign, um, I think what I what I really focused on was a couple of things. I saw some I saw some room for improvement in the policy document. Uh, I wanted to exp I wanted to show what I thought real engagement looked like, and and what we did is we you know we held four meetings. The superintendent has broken the district up into four sub -group, subdivisions essentially um, uh, for operational efficiencies. And, and we had a we had a public meeting in each four. We did a large mind mixer campaign, which is the it's a the district has an online forum sort of thing where you can go on and, and discuss issues about 
uh, about the school district uh, if you can't make it to a meeting. Uh, we did a survey uh, of parents across the district and online. Um, we did a lot of different community engagement activities uh, to get people's input about what they thought the board's vision, their vision should be. Um, previous to that, they'd done a lot of work on, a, on the turnaround plan that I had mentioned before, um, and, and, and that was what the district should, should do. So, so uh, you know, again, it was, uh, I got the board out there um, to do um, some visioning um, exercises with the community, um, held four meetings, like I said, and from that we produced, from all of that, we produced um, uh, an updated ENDS policy. It's our vision for the, for the district. And so uh, that vision then led and directed the update of all of our other policies, uh, and we just actually finally completed that uh, revision a couple of months ago. It's, uh, it's going to be codified here in the next, uh, I think, in the next school board meeting even. Um, the other thing I, I personally, as a, as a planner, I, I have a strong, um, strong sense in um, sustainability. And as, a, as, a, as an entity, a government entity that owns and operates a lot of different buildings, um, I know that a lot of the staff was already working towards certain sustainable policies, whether it was energy efficiency, water efficiency, um, air quality in our schools, all of these things. They were already working towards those, but it hadn't been codified in our policy. And so I made sure that that policy was in, uh, included in, in the update to our um, policy manual. And so, uh, again, I, I had set out several um, promises that I made as a candidate that I would do, and I believe that I fulfilled them uh, in this last year and a half. I certainly have a long way to go, just like the district has a long way to go. We are not fooling ourselves that we have a lot more improvement that we need to do, but we're doing everything that we can to make sure that the culture is one of engagement, but also of constant improvement. We need to constantly better ourselves. We cannot be happy with, we cannot rest on our laurels that we got provisional accreditation. We have, to, we have to strive for full accreditation. When we get fully accredited, we cannot rest on those laurels. We have to be you know, ultimately the best district in the city. We have to compete with all these things. I believe that um, the public education um, situation, if you will, in Kansas City is the city's number one economic development issue. Mm -hmm. and I think the mayor has even said that. Um, unless we can start turning out, um, unless people believe, and again, we do turn out, we still have the best high school in the region. I think that is overlooked quite often. But until people believe that we have a uh, quality public education system, People in my neighborhood in particular and, and other neighborhoods all over the city are going to go to Lee Summit, Blue Springs, uh, they're going to move to Kansas, they're going to you know, move out of state um, fleeing Kansas City public school system. And that has a huge economic development impact on the entire region. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we are definitely breaking sound barriers here. Uh, Mr. Han, we'd like to open the final say-so. The floor is all yours. Uh, I would just say I encourage everybody to go vote on April 8th. Um, I would encourage you to get involved in your, in your public schools. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities to volunteer and read, uh, to volunteer uh, and help the school board, to volunteer and, and do everything you can for, for public education in our community. Um, I think it's a moral imperative for all of us to get involved, and I would encourage you to do so. Thank you, Mr. Han, for your time. I'm Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Check out all of the Kansas City, Missouri School District Board candidates, said that backwards, online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. And remember, the sky is the limit. If you aim high and shoot for the moon, say you miss, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care until next time. CMG wants you to always remember, the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Thanks.